Hi everyone, um, I am going to be speaking my um, testimony um, and the Lord gets all the glory. He is the reason I am where I am with the same mind. <laughs> um, he has been my rock, my stronghold. He's everything. Um, he's my deliverer and um, no matter what I've gone through, what I've been through, it has been to refine me for this very moment where we are right now. Um, and he, like he said, he um, counted all joy because no matter what, we don't know what our tomorrows are. He knows our tomorrows. But um, no matter what he said, he's been with me through everything. And I know that he has. I know that he's been there he's heard my cries he heard my prayers he heard and saw everything and um and there's purpose in everything no matter what what hurt we've been through what brokenness we've gone through he's been through it all so i'm just gonna say um a quick prayer um for guidance lord jesus help me to get your get these words out lord give me guidance direction Help me with my words in your mighty, precious name. I pray for the hearts that are going to hear this, that it goes to who needs to hear it. You said this is going to help a lot of people, and I pray for their hearts to receive it, knowing that you get all the glory, and there is light and love and peace and joy at the end of all of it. Thank you, Father, in your mighty, precious name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Oh, I didn't think it was going to be this hard. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, because uh, what I've... I, um, as I'm writing everything, I, I, I really put everything in... Um, it's color-coded because each color is a chapter in my life. And um, going through everything, I just... I can see the what I've been through, how it molded um, things that I've actions that I took later on in life um, because of where I came from, what I did, or where what I've been through. Um, so I'm just gonna just kind of you'll see it, you'll see it come together. Um, and through everything, the Lord has always been there. So. Um, Growing up, um, when I was young, I had my mom and my dad, um, and I grew up with two sisters. Um, I, I was the middle child. I had an older sister that um, had Down syndrome, and it was pretty severe. She, you couldn't understand anything she said. And then I had a younger sister, um, and we're all one year and one month apart from each other. So it's um, November, she's November, I'm December, my youngest sister's January, and we're literally, we're literally well, like one year apart from each other. So um, growing up, because my, my um, sister had Down syndrome, and the other, my other sister, um, she had a lot of sicknesses. So I was like the one that kind of just got the brunt of everything. If, if, if that's even the word, but um, pretty much by the time I was 11 years old, I had already endured verbal abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse from my mom, my dad, my uncle, my cousin, and a family friend. And um, my dad was an alcoholic and my mom was very, very co-dependent on him. Um, yeah, she was, she very much depended on him for everything, about everything, um, even disciplining us. Like she would tell me all the time because I was always getting in trouble for something. Um, she would tell me all the time and I, it would make me scared of him. Um, she would always say, wait till your dad gets home, wait till your dad gets home. I would come home in fear, like on the bus, I would be in fear to come home to, to, to him. Um, physical abuse meant um not just the belt but the belt buckle 
I would always have welts in my backs from from them. And I was the only one that got hit because the other two, um, there was one was sick all the time, and the other one, um, my other sister, my older sister had um, has Down syndrome. She's still alive. Um, and we're in our fifties. Yeah, we're all in our fifties. Um, anyways, so at one point, because he was an alcoholic, he w missed work a lot. He was fired a lot, I I'm assuming, because he was always out of work. Um, we were homeless at one point, living in our car. So it's my, me and my dad and the, my, th um, the three of us, this, the little three, three girls, um, living all in a car. And I believe that was like for a whole summer because I remember it was like summertime. We were always at the park. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I was little, but we let, we, I was um, talking to my sister and we would, um, I remember where I used to sleep. I used to sleep the driver's side feet part. So we kind of slept on the feet part and then I guess they stretched out this. I don't know. I don't remember that much, but I know where I slept. Um, so we, um, we slept in a car. We lived in a car and, um, we were evicted multiple times. Um, we either had electricity, we either had, we paid, either paid rent or pay electricity one time. That's where we ended up, um, getting removed from my into foster care we ended up going into foster care let me not skip skip ahead um we lived with multiple people when we weren't living on our on our own with my mom and dad um so the final eviction and actually um on when we were at the park that's where we f we um we were picked up from this family friend that ended up um at the at the beginning of my message from the abuse that that was a family friend he found us at the park so up until um oh yeah the other um abuse that i endured um they would my punishment was um and again i was the only one punished like i i felt like i was such a bad kid like they made me they made me feel like I was, um, I never could do anything right. Everything was always wrong and I was always in trouble. Um, my punishment would, would be, um, there was like a, in the living room, some kind of a dresser or I don't know what it was, but um, that's where my, my punishment was to stay there. all. I would stay there all day long. I would sleep there. Um, I think they gave me a pillow, but um, my mom, I think at one point um, she, my mom and dad were separated at one point. Um, there was infidelity in their marriage. Um, so he would kind of come and go and, um, she was on aid. And so because she didn't want to deal with me, she would just put me in the corner. Um, that was the punishment. Um, and I think because of her, um, I, I'm assuming she went through depression or something. We, we missed a lot of school. I think I missed all of second grade. Um, my, my sister, me and my sister missed a lot of school. And because of that, when I did get into foster care, um, they skipped us up ahead because we had missed so much. So when I went to school, I remember sitting there and everything was just blank. I, I, I didn't understand anything. It was like a foreign language trying to understand, um, even be going to school. School ended up becoming a big problem for me because it was just hard. Everything was hard. Um, I went to multiple schools like I, I couldn't I, I can't to today I cannot tell you how many schools I've been to from the time I was with my mom and dad up until I was 11 I had been to lots of schools we went to school in between um, the school year we would move a lot we there was no stability no stability at all and then um, so with all of that there was like a bullying um, and because I guess I, I wasn't understanding a lot of what was going on in school. I was bullied or um, I got jumped one time. Um, I've been in lots and lots of fights. Like, I don't know if I've been in fights every school I went to, but I was in a lot of fights. A lot of fights. Um, I fought a boy one time. I actually ended up fighting boyfriends after that. 
my ex-husband, um, always constantly fighting, physical. Um, when I went to school, I was, I only knew how to st stand up for myself by fighting. Um, I was would get suspended because of the fights, m missing more school. Um, let me see. Yeah, so the final time when we we ended up getting um, removed was the final um, eviction that they got. Um, my mom, I guess she said she was not gonna, um, I guess the, I think that month we, the month before we didn't have electricity. So she was, she said this month, we're not gonna have, not have electricity. So we're gonna pay the pg and &E. I remember this, I, I was 11 years old. We're gonna pay the pg and &E and we're not gonna pay the rent. So we got evicted. So now we didn't have no pg and &E and no place to live. And um, then I guess the neighbors across the street told her of a school that um, we could go to and um, she could pick us up at, well, we could live there and she could pick us up after she got settled and got herself together, her and my dad, because um, they were still together. Um, it turned out it was a shelter. So the police came and picked us up and um, we never went back to them. They never got it, got a home to take us back. Um, so we stayed in foster care, we, we aged out. Um, and actually that was the best thing that could have happened for us was to go into foster care. Um, even though like it wasn't the be ideal place, but um, she, she had brothers, but nobody wanted to take us in. So we didn't really have family. My All of my dad's family was in Mexico and my mom's family, it was here, but they didn't want to take us in. Um, she has like five brothers and not one of them did that. So we ended up going into foster care. All of us ended up, we ended up at the same foster home, the first home. Um, and then we got separated because they couldn't take care of my sister, the oldest that had Down syndrome because she had, um, she was very severe and she had never learned to take care of herself. She couldn't dress herself properly, clean up after herself, take a shower. She needed a lot of help. Um, at this point she's 12, I'm 11 and my sister is 10. And um, so that was the beginning. We went into foster care and throughout the whole, from 11 to uh, the time I aged out, um, I had been to seven homes, seven schools, more fights, more suspensions. Um, at 12 years old, um, and I would we would visit regularly with my, my parents if they had a home or have they had somewhere to live because they lived with people or they lived somewhere, they worked somewhere and they lived there. Um, so this time they were, they were um, living where they were working at. So um, we would go on every regular weekends, go Monday and then go back home um, to our foster home on Sunday. And um, this particular re this particular weekend, um, my dad ended up, um, they always had us at, at people's houses really late. So we came home and I was very tired. I was being bratty. Um, I didn't want, we had to fix our bed on the floor and I was tired and crying and I didn't want to fix it. And my dad um, beat me again that, that time. And, um, I told him um, that I wished he would die, and um, I went. We went home, and that week he died. And I, f I had so much guilt. Um, I really felt like that was my fault. And at the funeral, I was crying and screaming, and nobody knew. Like I don't know if my mom had heard me when I said that to him, but um, that's what happened. And I always like, I kind of, I, I always carried that for a long time with me. So then it was just her and um, I ended up, this was um, in my sixth foster home. I, it was a Christian family. And I, um, I went to a winter camp um, and there was a, um, a call for prayer. Oh. <laughs> I 
I didn't think I was going to cry, but I'm trying to be strong. <clears throat> so there was a call for prayer for anybody who had endured um, For anybody who had endured abuse at home or um, sexual abuse, and um, I went up and I was praying, and I had I, I was so strong to, at thirteen to go up there because I had never told anybody about my dad, and, and that's the one that I was really carrying in my heart about the abuse from him. Um. I, when it came to my mom and my dad, I really felt, and I even told my sister, even though she, we grew up in the same home, we were treated very differently. And I told her, I really felt like my parents hated me. <laughs> like, I, as a mom, I, I can't understand that. But I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I can't explain it. But I just know that that's how I felt. And she told me something that was interesting but at the same time she was their favorite and I resented her for so many years and I apologized to her um during um COVID we were we would talk a lot during that time and I told her um, I was how I I just felt so bad I I was treated one way she was treated another but I took it out on her how I was treated um I guess I was jealous of I was dumped on and they were treated very differently for for their own reason. I don't I don't know what that was. But um it was just hard for me, I guess. But anyways, um let me not get sidetracked cuz I'll, I'll I'll be off all over the place. Um when I when I answered that um I that altar call, I um it was about the sexual abuse with my dad that I had endured from my dad. And I even asked my sister if she had endured anything, like when we were talking and during COVID, and she didn't. And I even had told my mom about that, but um, she didn't believe me either. And that's okay, that's, it is what it is. Um, so when I answered the, the, the call and they came praying for me, um, I just gave it all to the Lord. I gave it all to him, all that I had already gone through, everything from when I was a child, from up until I went to foster care, all of that junk, everything, all of the abuse, everything that, that I had already gone through, I, I just gave it all to the Lord. And while I'm praying and I'm crying and I'm, I'm just giving it all at his feet, I started um, praying in tongues like I've never experienced in my life. Up until that time, I had never done it. I don't think, I don't know if I had even heard it, but it just came out of me and I couldn't stop. And I, that's, that's where I experienced the Lord. I experienced, I had an experience with him and I felt him so strong in my heart. I told the Lord, I don't want to cry, Lord. And because of that day, no matter what I went through after, I, I, I always knew that he was there, no matter, no matter what. And still, this is still the beginning. This is not even halfway there. And, So I gave it all to the Lord and I I was reading my Bible. I was searching for him because I felt him. I, I know what it's like to feel him when I was little. I was 13 and I, I experienced him. 
and it was so awesome. It was so awesome, and I knew that he was, he was real. <laughs> so after that, because school was so hard for me, for some reason it wasn't so hard for my sister. Um, she she excelled in school. She did so good, and um, I struggled. I struggled so much. Um, so it was, um, the, my foster mom was having a real hard time with me because of my grades and I couldn't get it together. I would do good and then I would do bad. I would do good at the beginning, of course, cause it's all fresh, <laughs> but, um, I would just, I, it could, I couldn't, it was hard. Um, and so when it was, um, my eighth grade, I was really trying at like at the end because I, I, I was not about to graduate, um, uh, my eighth grade. So I I was trying and trying and trying. I was did I they put me on <clears throat> where I had to um, check in weekly reports. I had re weekly reports. That what that's what it was. They would give me my homework, what my grade was for that week for so far, what my grade was, and what I could do. Anyways, um, I fell short like a couple points, and I didn't graduate eighth grade. I had to do it over. So she told me, we're doing, okay, so I had to do eighth grade with my sister. And um, she's like, we're not going to go through this again. If you can't get it together, I'm just going to call your, your social worker and you're going to go somewhere else. She just didn't, didn't um, she didn't have the, the she didn't want to deal with me. That's all. So next year came and I'm, I'm doing good. And then um, my grades started slipping again. And she called my social worker and there I go to foster care number seven uh, by myself by this time my sister was with me on on the sixth she had been with me at an um she had gone to another one for a long time we were separated the three of us my oldest st stayed at that other um foster home because it was for special needs so she stayed there for a long time and so at this point me, me and my sister were together for a good while and then i got shipped off to number seven and there is where I got pregnant at 16. Um, there was no stability, no accountability. Um, she, um, and it, it's me, I was, I, I, I was wild child. And, um, but there was no structure, like at least number six, foster care number six, there was structure and I was, there was a lot I was not allowed to do. Um, I didn't, I wasn't allowed to go to like dances and um, nothing, I, I, not, no after school curriculum. They were very strict. A lot of the foster homes were very strict. And then this one, I had so much freedom. It, uh, that's why I got pregnant at 16. Um, too much freedom. But, um, I ended up, I, so I'm, I'm still going to school. I'm going, I actually started working, um, had my son at 17. No, I was 16 when I had him a, year, a month before I turned 17. So I'm working, um, I started living with my boyfriend at that age um, and his mom and um, d I didn't even like the the foster mom was like didn't she was collecting but didn't it wasn't like a big deal um, that I was I didn't go back so I just um, stayed there and um, and then we ended up um, breaking up um he got somebody else pregnant while we were together and um told me i had to leave and i had nowhere to go um i went to my mom's i left my son there for a little bit i went to my mom's and um seeing if i can stay with her and um i was in severe depression for like three days i didn't get out of bed um she told me i could not stay there i needed to leave um so um i have no family like li i literally have nobody i have no family she's like the only family i have um my mom my sister's in foster care my sister's actually at this point she's going through um the foster home is moving out of state or si out of the county or something like that and she ended up getting um adopted so i and they moved out to like in the fresno area <clears throat> it's like three hours to three hours from here and um so 
I ended up calling one of my friends, my childhood friends, and um, sh she welcomed me in with open arms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I went back, I got my son, and we're living with her. I got a job. I'm going, um, taking care of him. I'm, tr I'm trying to take care of him, and he got real sick. So then um, I ended up having my ex-boyfriend moved out of his mom's house with the girlfriend and so that I moved back with her because she was able to help me with with my son my son's two years old at this point and then um that's where I met my future ex-husband <laughs> that's what I'll call him because it took a long time to get divorced but that's what he is now um he um I met him in August and I was pregnant within two or three months. My son was born the following August. And um, that starts my next chapter. Um, we, I was, when I met him, I was 18, he was 20. Um, we were so young. Um, we lived together probably um for about seven years before we got married and um so we were living in sin and it wasn't my first time I was living with my other boyfriend also but all this time I always knew the Lord and I always prayed to the Lord I wasn't reading my Bible I wasn't going to church I wasn't seeking him like I should be seeking him but I always knew to call on him I I, I prayed all the time to him like and I prayed so selfishly. I prayed, I need, I need, I need this job. I need. Uh, it was always about a job. I need to, to be able to do this, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I need this. I need that. I I was selfish. Um, and He was so faithful, so faithful through, all the time, all the time. He favored me so much, no matter what. I, I, got jobs that I didn't qualify for, and. And uh, there's another a video that I have um, where I, I talk about the miracles that he's done in my life. And um, I got a job, definitely didn't qualify for. Shouldn't have even been able to get it because the, the transfer span was like so much. It was double. Um, and uh, he, I got that job because of the Lord, n not because of me. I know that everything, everything that I have, he was always there. He was always opening doors for me. Even if I was, I, I was giving him a little, a tiny, tiny little bit of my life. And he was opening doors wide open for me. He always took care of me. I, I would, when, in, when I was um, living with my friend, I would go to work. I would do double shifts and work late at night. And nothing ever like now I think like so much could have happened I'm so young I'm 18 years old I look like I'm 15 um I would get stopped by police all the time telling me I should be in what where am I am I not in school and I would have to show my ID all the time um I I could have been kidnapped no thousands of times I used to come home so late all the time in the dark um barely I don't know, barely surviving. I was, that was my life in survival mode, anxiety. I didn't know what anxiety was until I didn't have anxiety. I just, it was so normal. My, from my childhood to a lot of my marriage. Um, so everything that I had here as a child, all of that abuse came into my marriage and some fidelity infidelity um hurt control uh jealousy um fights some yeah fights um alcohol it, all of it all of it all of it all of this all of this came into my marriage all of it like there was a whole door opened and some um and I had two more sons in that pro in with my with my husband. Um, 
it was um it was hard it was hard living living that life i tried um no matter what happened to me i didn't care about what happened to me anymore like i just didn't i just wanted stability i wanted to my sons to have everything that i didn't i wanted them to have their mom their dad to have a normal it, childhood to go to one school one high school because i wanted that so much that was one thing that I always wanted. I would see all these kids that that knew each other for years. I didn't know what that was. I, I barely went went one school year from beginning to end. I, I'm not sure if I even did that, but I might have. But I um, wanted that so bad for my sons. I wanted them to have stability. I wanted them to have the love and the nurturing that I didn't have. And I love, I gave them love that the Lord taught me because that's when I learned what love is, is when I had my sons. Um, and I poured out so much love, love that I wish that I had growing up. I, and it's okay because whatever I learned from that life as a child I took all of that and I gave them everything, all the love and nurturing that that um, I learned from her mistakes and I didn't carry it into mine. I didn't want it. I didn't want that for them. Um, I didn't spank my kids. I grounded them. Um, I took things away. Um, I think I my two oldest got slapped one time because they talked back when they were teenagers and it was one time um but um yeah they were um i i got blessed with my sons because my mom used to tell me all the time you're gonna have somebody your your kids are gonna be just like you you're she used to make it sound like i was so evil <laughs> and um they were, I mean, they had their, I had my, my own little things with them. I mean, they were teenagers. They were boys. I had I experienced, but it wasn't like a drawn out. Like I had to deal with things over and over with them. Um, I, I feel like I, I truly got blessed. And um, anyways, let me go back. Um, So no matter what I was going through, I, I sacrificed so that they could have stability. And that's what I wanted. But at the same time, as they were getting older, um, I started thinking, I mean, they're seeing what's happening, right? They see how I'm being talked to, how am I be I'm being treated. Um, I started wondering if I'm doing more damage to them by staying in the situation. Um, one time he, because um, then he started... For a long time, this was my life. When my sons were little, I I did everything. I was the mom, the the dad. He worked, but he went out a lot. And that was my peace when he did go out. So, I mean, we would fight still because I knew what he was doing. Um, but this whole time, I'm mom and dad. And then all of a sudden, it stopped my youngest was born and he like the light bulb went on or something and he just stopped he became a dad for the first time with my youngest son by this time we have three sons together um he loved my the youngest so much like he just loved him so much and and i know he loves them all all now but they other two were treated different than he, than my youngest son by him and he knows that and we're in a better place now than where where we were even after years after being to, um, separated. But um, there's this one time that he tried to kick my oldest son out um, at this time, um, his, his oldest son. He begged up his clothes. And at that point, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to do, I need, it's time. I cannot wait no more. I need to do this. And actually, let me rewind because there's something that that I I happened before this 
um, when my kids were younger, um, there was a situation that happened and um, we were in a, we're in the garage and my, he punched me in the face. I mean, I don't want to get explicit, but we were fighting physical. He was physically hitting me and my son walked out into, and saw my um, older son with him. And um, I, after that day, I, um, I packed us up and I had always seen, again, I don't have a family members. I don't have nobody. I don't have nothing. I have coworkers and I don't tell them everything that's going on because it's embarrassing. And I've worked for social services at this point in the bathroom. I used to see all the time. Are you being, are you in a domestic violence relationship? And there was a number on there. Um, so I knew that in my head, I, I knew that there was help. So I packed us up, I put my stuff in storage, I put, I got, I went to the police report, I did restraining orders, I did all that I could. And then I called the number because they told me, oh, when I did my, my police report, they said that um, there's a number if you need to go to a shelter. And I'm like, yes, I need a shelter. I need to go to a shelter. Um, and they'll help you get on your feet and blah, blah, blah. I did all that I, I did everything. And my coworker was with me and she said, um, she went with me and she was like helping me out the police report and everything. And then um, when I called the phone number, um, I the lady said, there's no room. And I just broke down because I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like literally I have no money. I have, no, I have nothing, I have nobody. Um, I broke down, I, I, was on my, I was on the floor crying. Um, I, I didn't know what to do. I just packed everything up. I left. What am I supposed to do? And um, I went to my, my coworker said you could stay here and, and, and tell you try to get, um, get into a place. So I'm at her parents' house. So it's her, her parents, uh, one of her sisters, and then me and my three kids at this point. My oldest lives with his dad. Um, and I was having all these nightmares that he was parked outside in his truck. It, it, he doesn't even know about this. Um, but I'm, 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 I took a leave of absence at work and I'm trying to figure out, I put restraining orders at all my, the kids daycare, the, excuse me, the summer camp everywhere. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I really feel lost. Um, and then me and my son, I picked up my son and we're driving to our storage to get some stuff and we ran into him. He, he was literally across the street and he had, they had taken, they had picked him up, take, arrested him. And then he, I don't know, maybe a day or two, he was released. I, re, I don't remember, but, um, this was years ago. My son was eight six and my baby was like maybe a year old um he ended up and i'm barely learning how to drive so i didn't know where i was going i'm very bad at at directions i have zero zero um self um sense of direction zero it's a, it's a disability i call it it's not a disability but it's my disability um so i I try to get away and he follows us. I'm cut off and he's, um, we're talking. Anyways, we, I ended up going back. Um, and I knew then that I needed to get a plan if I needed to do this. If I, if I, I, need, I needed to get out of the situation, but I knew I needed to get a plan. Um, the plan didn't come together for 10 years. And, um, I ended up buying a car. I put it, put it, um, a cover on it, had it at the end of the, at the end of the, um, corner of where we lived. And that's when, um, he, my son is now, he went from eight to like, I think he's like 16, 17. So it was in like 10 years. It was almost 10 years. Um, so that's when he attempted to, um, kick my son out. I ended up calling the sheriffs so that, um, I'm making this longer than it needs to be. I'm sorry. Anyways, I came up with a plan and um, finally I, we, we got legally separated. Um, 
and there was a lot of um, there was a lot of ugliness in in in, in all of that. Um, but we I ended up doing a legal separation, and um, after all that, uh, about a year later, um, he came back. I let him back. Yeah, I let him back. And um, then there was another episode again with my my son, and they almost got in a fight, and I had to call the police again. And this time he went to jail. This time it turned out. This is where the Lord uses a bad for a good, a good for the good. Uh, the jail ministry ended up um, meeting him. I think he was there for maybe a week, maybe less. I don't remember, but that ministry helped him, and um, and it just didn't help him. He he brought my sons in, the younger two, and got them saved. And my son would come and minister to me. Um, after all of that, um, the youngest one. But um, during during let me rewind a little bit. When I when we were married, and I was going through all of everything, I would cry out to the Lord, and I would just be like lord why am i being punished why am i being punished with with this marriage i didn't understand um but um he ended up changing everything and no matter what we've been through all of that all of that marriage all of that ugliness all of the abuse it none of that matters anymore because the most important thing that he did is he took my sons and, and and showed them what it's like to be seeking the Lord, to know the Lord. And all of that craziness, all of the brokenness, um, none of that matters. All that matters is, and I told him, I'm so thankful and grateful. I know that we went through a lot of ugliness, but something came out of it at the end. And he, he brought my sons to the Lord and um, my my youngest was I want to say 10 years old at that time so my youngest was t about 10 no probably 11 I don't know somewhere around there and then my um, the one the one of the middle ones he was about maybe 13 14 somewhere around there and um, so I'm very very more thankful than I can imagine it it all overpowers um the rest of the the ugliness that even happened so i learned to, i i forgave him and i forgive him for all all of that that we went through and sometimes we need to be broken down and um before the good can come out um So that was a blessing in disguise for sure. Um, out of all of that, I went the wrong way. Um, so I started going out and drinking and going out. And that almost became like a, a, a stronghold. Like, I mean, I would spend... As my kids got older, I, I learned to do things like take, we took vacations and we did stuff. I was growing with them, but you get stuck in the world it, and it's so deceiving and it, it looks shiny and, and like a, a golden egg, but it's, it's like a rotten egg once you open it. Um, I got stuck and by 2019, it started getting old, but from, I was stuck there for a while. Um, I was going out all the time. Um, my youngest is the one that really probably suffered the most from me. And that's a regret that I have. That um, he was still growing up and he was still little. And um, me and him ended up talking. And I, I asked for his forgiveness because I, I wish I could take that back. And I can't. I told him, I'm sorry. I cannot take it back. I wish that I could. I do wish that I could take that back. Um, cause you, it's a, it's a lifestyle that you get stuck in. It was, 
it's one of my regrets. But I told him, you need to, you need to soften your heart for me for that because I cannot take it back. And you need to forgive. I told him, you need to forgive me. You need to have a forgiving heart. Um, and I'm sorry that I can't take that back. I wish, I wish that I could. I wish that that never happened. But I did get stuck there. It's, it is, you get, you, that's how I felt. I felt like I got stuck there until it finally started feeling like it, it's old. It's old. And I don't, I don't feel like doing that no more. Um, but once you're, um, and, and at that same time, uh, that's when I started coming closer to the Lord. Um, I was desire, it was like he was drawing me, um, pulling me closer to him. Um, I started going to church. I started going to church a lot more often. And actually, I was, I started going to church and I was still hanging out with my friends when I, when I was going to church. And then little by little, I, it was like less going out, more church. That's kind of how it happened. Um, I got my friends to come to church. Um, but everybody there was going out too. So it was like nothing really changed, but I, I was, I knew I was searching for something. I just, I wanted what I, what, what I got when I was 13. I wanted that. That's what I wanted. Um, and it just happened during COVID. A lot happened during COVID. Um, so let's fast forward, forward to COVID. Um, my eyes really, 2020 vision really, really opened up my eyes. Um, and I started, um, my son was also one of my, my son that had the issues we, we had the, the, the whole two stories with my um, husband. He's the one that I, I really started. Um, he was in the Navy. He came out and he went to go live with his girlfriend in LA and there was a lot of stuff going on there. Um, and yeah, it was just a lot. And, um, I started fasting for him. I started praying for him. I started, the Lord knows, like I've said that I've said this before, he knows our bait. He's a fisherman and he knows our bait. And that's my bait. My sons are my bait. Um, I was fasting and fasting and fasting for him. Um, praying and fasting so much that I was um, getting dreams. I got two, two dreams about him and, and I told him about him. And, and I know it's for that I, for me to, to pray for him. And I know that that those dreams are, it was actually what he was going through. Um, it was some personal stuff that was going, that was going on with him. And, um, and I told him about it. So I know when I share with him, he, 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 he's the one that believes me, um, or that believed me out of the, out of, uh, uh my sons, the first, now they are starting to wake up, but Thank you, Lord Jesus. But um, anyways, um, let me get back to the Lord started talking to me about their sins, my son's sins. So I was bringing that to them. He started talking to me about other people. And, and little by little, the more I was fasting, that's what it was. The more I was fasting, the more I was getting closer to the Lord. And I was, I would guess I was selfishly, I was seeking the Lord, but I was also selfishly fasting for my son. I was bringing him to him at his feet. I was praying so much and I was, the Lord started, I started hearing from the Lord. Um, and I really felt convicted like I needed to get a divorce, like ASAP. I've been, I had been trying to do it before and I, I came like, I file paperwork as a legal secretary. I I know how to do that. And I was stuck. I, I don't know what was going on that I it was I was stuck with with this I I had done my legal separation on my own no problem. I get it was all it was all good. But to do the final divorce, I was stuck and I told the Lord and I even tried to contact an attorney. He never returned my call. Um everything I did, I was like coming to a like a a block. I was blocked every single time. And I told the Lord, Lord, I don't know. Am I supposed to divorce him? Am I supposed to be married? I mean, I'll be obedient if I needed to go back to him. I mean, I know I endured all of this, but 
whatever you want me to do. I was willing to go back. If he, if that's what he wanted, that's what I was going to do. And, um, because what I'm, me doing it, what I was trying to do wasn't working. So I thought, are you blocking this because you need me to be married to him? And, um, and I kept having it in my heart, having him, I kept praying and praying and I, I, I didn't understand. Um, one day I audibly heard the Lord tell me, give divorce papers to St. John. That's his, his name is John. And, um, I was like, I was so confused because <laughs> I didn't know who the saint was. <laughs> I didn't know I was so confused and it clicked in my head. I'm half asleep. Um, and if all of you that know you're in between asleep and awake, I was right there and it, it wasn't registering who the saint was <laughs> because I didn't see him like that, but the Lord does, um, at this point, we're like, uh, we're not really talking and we haven't talked for years. And if we did, my I would block him all the time and my son would tell me, dad needs to talk to you about whatever, whatever. So I would unblock him. We would talk, whatever our conversation. And I always had to block him because he didn't know how to be nice to me. So I'm not married to him anymore and I, and I know how to use the block now. So, but we're in much, much better place now. Thank you, Lord. I've come a long ways and I've forgiven so many people. Um, truly, truly, the Lord has taught me to love and forgive. Um, um, so I talked to him and um, I, in five days, every day I, 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 I was at the courthouse filing, in five days I did my divorce and I, I guess I needed his permission because he gave me permission. And as soon as he said, give him, everything flowed. Everything went through. Everything was filing. Not a problem. He was signing everything. Um, my ex, he was signing everything. Everything was fine. No problem at all. Like the Lord blessed it and it was blessed. It, it was, it was done. Um, so that was I, I heard him audibly and then I started hearing him more and more and more. He was giving me messages for everybody around me. He started telling me to tell that's when the, the, which I'm call it was coming out. And, um, he told me to tell everybody to not get it. No, I was telling everybody under the sun, everybody, nobody, this is how many, this is how many people listened. Yeah, that, that many. And the, three of them are my sons. That's how many people listened. Um, and I was praying and fasting and I was really, really Lord Jesus, Lord, let not, let, I, I was praying for my sons not to get, not to get it, please, because I can tell them one thing, but it's whatever's in their heart, they're going to do. They're grown men. Um, I, I fasted for them. I, he, the Lord told me they're not going to have to. And remember, I have a, at this point, one of my sons is active in the Navy. And um, this was, uh, so with him in, in 2019, right before COVID, he came and told me that they did a test at, in the military and um, they did a, like a physical. Um, they did a special physical that year, whatever, I don't know. But there was something, they found something in his heart. It's not serious enough where he needs to take medication but it's, it's something that he just needs to watch out for. Um, and because of that, he did not have to take it. Um, and, and then it was like back and forth. Um, they said that they were not going to, um, authorize that. And he was waiting for any day to be, everybody around him was let go. So he thought he, and they told him, um, more than likely you're going to be let go. Also, everybody was getting fired, let go from the military. Um, so he, every couple of weeks he would call me. He's like, I'm just li waiting, waiting. I should be here. I should probably be leaving in about six months or less than six months. I should be home, blah, blah, blah. Every, every couple of weeks I would hear that. Um, he's all, they don't know what they're reassigning me. Um, so I'm going to be doing this until they figure out what they're going to do. Um, it was like that. And then they told him, um, and still he didn't get it, didn't have to get it. 
he wasn't trying to get it. Um, and it turned out then they wanted to bring everybody back and they, they gave him his old position back, put him back on the ship. And he is supposed to be, he got his promotion and back pay and, um, he, he got blessed and all my, my sons were, were working and did not have to get it. And they didn't even want to get it. So I was like, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank I was, I would, I would, I was fasting so much for that. Um, but that's how many, and then the Lord, like about a year later, he started telling me everybody who got it needed to repent. Everybody tell them to repent. Um, and I'm not sure that a lot of people are repenting. I don't think they think that there's anything wrong with it still. Uh, the people around me. But um, that's that. I'm trying to think. I think. And then, then that's where I'm at right now. So I think I pretty much covered it. But um, that's my testimony. And I hope that this helps somebody out there. I hope. It touches somebody's um, heart and know that nothing is in vain. Everything that you go through, um, no matter what we've been through, the Lord is there with you. Um, and he's, he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to, to bring our hearts to him. And forgiveness is so huge. I've forgiven my mom, my dad, my first son's dad, my ex-husband, and my, then, then there's my friends and my loved ones who didn't believe that I was hearing from the Lord. And it, it was hurtful at first, but I understand now and it's okay. I still love them. It's hard when you don't hear the Lord to believe that he's speaking. And that's what I'm going to say about that. Um, they, I don't know what they think I'm, I'm hearing that I'm calling them, that the Lord is calling them, but it's okay. I can't, um, the Lord will work, will work on their hearts and I just need to, um, keep praying for them. And I pray for them every day, multiple times a day. Um, and I know that they're, they're going to be coming around. They'll see stuff. And if they, even if they don't see it now, they will eventually. And I still love them. Um, there's. They're a little lost, but they'll be found. And that's it. I love you guys. And um, this is where I'm at now. Um, I'm seeking the Lord like you guys. And I've come, I've been very humbled in my life. Um, but I have the peace that I always wanted. I have the peace with the Lord. And, um, it's something that I didn't know for a long time. Um, it's something that I knew that I wanted all through my marriage. And even though I went the wrong way for a while, um, it's it's good to see that the Lord still, um, that the Lord worked on those around me to, to be able to, to help my sons when I, I could, when I was too lost to, to be able to do that. But um, I'm grateful for a lot of things and I'm grateful no matter what I went through, um, I know that it's not in vain in, in the way the Lord says, um, rejoice. Um, what is that? I'm sorry. Count it all joy. So sorry. Um, count it all joy because um, I didn't understand that for a long time. And I think just recently I'm starting to understand that. Count it all joy because what he has for us is so much more than what we've gone through, what this world offers even. Um, so God bless you. Good night.